I'm going to show you briefly where you can find some sound, sound effects on the internet for free. All you need to do is go into a browser and type BBC sound effects and that will bring up BBC Rewind sound effects. These are sound effects that you can use for free for educational purposes and you can browse various categories and seek out things like clocks. Now, if you like a particular sound effect and you think it adds something to the capacity to tell the story, to bring the listener into the places where the narration is going and help the, the listener connect to the subject matter, you can download these simply by choosing either a WAV file or an MP3. The difference between these is the WAV file has more information, it's richer sound, it has more frequencies. Uh, an MP3 is a smaller file and it has been compressed, so you lose some of the subtleties, the high notes and the low notes. So we're going to select the WAV file and as you can see it downloads to your computer. This is how I got this applause sound for the purposes of this video. Here I'm going to zoom in. Now to zoom in you can see by looking at the view there's a zoom menu and you can use what they call hotkeys. So whilst using the mouse you can also use the keyboard. So by holding down control and one and control and three I can zoom in and I can zoom out of the found file. I place the cursor by clicking on it. I'm going to hold down control one and you can see we're zooming right in. seeing the sound file and we'll just listen to this section. I can see that there's noise here and this is where the music, the brass, starts. So let's listen. To prepare your sound files, a very helpful tool is to use the noise reduction effect here. Now, how you use this is you need to select a piece of the sound file where there is just noise. What the program is going to do is subtract that noise from the whole sound file. So you have to teach it. You, you're training an algorithm to listen out for one thing and then remove that from another. So 
By using the mouse, I'm selecting the noise. We'll listen again. And we'll go down the noise reduction. And you can see here, step one, get noise profile. So I click that and that's learned that information. The next step is to highlight the whole, select the whole sound file. And I've done this by double clicking on my mouse. And I'm going to go down to noise reduction again. And I'm going to choose how much noise reduction I want to apply in terms of decibels. So that's taking this information and re removing that information from the whole sound file. You can choose the amount in decibels, the sensitivity of the effect and the frequency smoothing. Frequency smoothing it basically refers to the complexity of the sound. So if it's a, a single tone, say a high pitched beep, you would put the frequency smoothing down low because it's not a complex sound. If it's complex with many different frequencies, make it higher. You can use this preview button to see how this effect is altering the sound. So let's try that with a bit more sound reduction. You can play about with this and experiment and it's important to listen back and see how you can best optimize. We'll apply that to the whole clip and you can see visually how the sound information changes. And you can see all of that noise has been digitally removed. And we'll play that. So <clears throat> you can see that the noise removal function will be very useful, particularly if you've been making audio recordings in areas that are uh, have a lot of background noise. And Audacity has a lot of good functionality. It has similar functions to other sound editors. Other sound editors like Adobe Audition have better algorithms and can do more detailed noise removal and uh, more complex effects. And still again, more complex is the tool Isotope RX. Isotope RX, which I'll show you briefly here, is specially designed for digital restoration of audio files. So here is the same piece of music. And 
and we will apply the same process but it will be with a better algorithm. We're going to choose the spectral denoise and we're going to again zoom in, select the noise We're going to learn that information <coughs> and then we're going to apply it to the whole sound file. So we'll preview that. So you can see the tools are similar and have uh, the same features but give you different levels of detail. If you use Audacity well, you can do a lot of things. If you get your audio recordings right in the beginning, you won't have to remove a lot of noise. Now we're going to cut up this sound file ready so that we can start arranging and layering the sound in the podcast. You can see from the two sections above that this is much longer. So I'm going to get rid of the rest of this sound file and we'll just zoom in there and listen for a nice place to phase out the music because I'm thinking the beginning of the podcast will use opera, the, the, the music, by introducing the subject. And then I'm going to follow on with uh, Ian Fraser, who's talking about Carl Rosa, and he introduces the subject. And then, with a view of moving along in the storytelling of the information. I'm going to use this applause to place people into a theatre and that will allow me to bridge the narrative from this piece of information into the next segment. Right, so I'm going to highlight this section and we're going to apply an effect. We're going to fade out. So these two effects are very simple. They allow you to transition from one sound file to another. We're going to fade out. And next, we're going to start arranging the layering and sequence. So I'm going to grab this and move it along. Now you notice that when I move my cursor onto the top part where the, the name of the file is, it changes into a hand. Now I can just left click on my mouse and drag it along. Mm -hmm. 
and I can see that's where I start to fade out so I'm going to be starting to fade this in as one sound file goes out another one should be introduced unless you're using a pause a piece of silence to produce a certain effect to get the listeners to think so I'm going to keep this on mute but take the music off mute so we want these two sound files active and this one silence just now Born Hamburg, 1842, died Paris, 1889. Let's return to the sound effect. So we've got the subject, the narrative, and now the sound effect. The fully click of applause and I'm going to take that and zoom out so that I can see things and move things more easily and move it just about there so as I zoom in now if you have a mouse with a, a scroll wheel on it, you can also hold down control and roll the scroll wheel to zoom in and out. Alternatively, as I said, you can use control one and control three, the hotkeys to navigate in the user interface so we're going to highlight this and delete that now I can cut it by holding control and X but I can also use backspace to delete that and we're not going to use all 18 seconds of applause and you can see up here how many how long the whole sound timeline is Right, so as with below, we're going to select the beginning of, of the applause and we're going to use fade in. And you can see the gradual ramping up of the sound and we're going to also fade that back out because this is going to bridge from one segment of the podcast into another. Now I'm going to highlight this whole file and reduce its uh, 
loudness by, uh, by using this effect, amplify. And we're going to take this maybe down 20 decibels and listen to that. Right. It's not necessary to be overly dominant with sound effects. They're just meant to illustrate and create feelings, draw people into the main narrative and subject sources. Something which you can do is change the pitch and the speed of the sound file. These are all connected. If you change the speed, you change the tempo and the pitch. If I slow the the sound file down, people's voices will become lower and slower. If I speed them up, people's voices become faster and higher. Let's illustrate this by doing it to extreme. <laughs> So, that makes it obvious that if you do this too much, it sounds unnatural. So, let's do it a little. Born Hamburg, 1842, died Paris, 1889, by term citizen. So that's just slightly slowing down Ian Fraser. Uh, to change the pace of what he's saying. And it's important to keep the pace consistent throughout your whole podcast. And it's also uh, worth debating whether you want to change the speed and pitch of somebody's voice at all. To bring all of the different elements that you've arranged together into one, you can click and hold down control and press A. That will select everything. And we go to track, down to mix and render. And you can see that that combines everything into a single file. Died Paris 1889 by term citizen of Hamburg, USA. He was a great figure in, in opera in the 19th century. Just obituaries generally state he was a child prodigy in the violin, touring Germany, Denmark, and England. He studied at Leipzig Conservatoire from the age of 17. Now, that, that segment would have run into the rest of Ian Fraser's talk, which 
spoke about lots of the venues that used to exist around Scotland. And I would work bringing in sound effects and original recordings to flesh out and to illustrate what he was trying to communicate. Um, the final thing you need to do once you've got to this stage is to export your files and you can export it in various sound formats. The smaller file, the less rich sound file is an mp3 and the richer, the more information is held in a WAV. So you name it. and you save it. Something you can do to this file is apply compression that can be very effective in enhancing the sound and making it fuller. So We will and just. He was the greatest figure in, in opera in my So you can see that whilst it amplifies and makes fuller the frequencies of the music and the speech, you also amplify some of the, the noise. Then all we've got to do is export the final file and you can do this in various formats mp3 is the smaller format which has less information in it and WAV is uh, the typical larger sound format that holds more information you can hear more frequencies in the web format. I'm going to for, uh, save it as the web and we'll replace this one. And you can put the artist name and attach metadata to the file if you want. And We'll go to that and we can touring Germany then he studied at like I'll provide some links to excellent videos on the uh, on Audacity. There is a lot that you can learn and do with this basic toolkit. Uh, Adobe Audition has similar but more articulate tools. But if you if you learn how to use Audacity, it can be sufficient to do very good radio and uh, podcast audio files. Thank you very much. I hope this has been helpful.